to climb a flight of stairs and now I've been out to went out for a pub lunch the, over the weekend and that just felt fantastic to be with the normal people again and, and, and that's the alarm that just yeah. shows that your pressure's a little bit high so we're yeah. just going to leave it now yeah. This is the kind of plastic heart with four valves and two pumping chambers fitted inside Matthew's chest. The blood flows through these tubes under his skin and out just below the ribcage. Now, normally, this would have to be driven by a huge pump in hospital. What's new is that Matthew has been given one of these, a portable pump. It's not light, seven kilos, but it does mean he can get out and about. This animation shows the plastic heart here beating in slow motion, doing the job of a real one. But it's not meant to be permanent. Uh, it took us about six hours to do the operation. The surgeon who fitted the heart here at Papworth Hospital says the aim is to buy time for Matthew while he waits for a human heart to be transplanted. The longest a patient has received and supported by one of these machines has been over three years. So it does provide medium to longer term support. And this is very important because it buys us more time to find a suitable heart for Matthew. The latest figures show that 132 people in Britain are hoping for a heart transplant. But on average they're waiting six months and while they do, 15% of them die. So the option of fitting an artificial heart may be critical, but there are risks. They're almost certainly safer than the heart that they're replacing, but they do have their problems. There are risks of blood clots, there are risks of infection, but we know of ways of trying to get around those and reducing those risks. For Matthew Green and his family, the little bag powering his new heart offers a new lease of life. His big hope? To go for a bike ride. David Shookman, BBC News, at Papworth Hospital near Cambridge. The former Egyptian president Hosni Mubarak is due to go on trial tomorrow over the killing of protesters during the uprising in February.